Hi everybody, Mary here, and let's talk about your Ballistic Pendulum at Home Lab. Um, for the first thing I want to talk about is doing labs at home. Um, I would love to have you be able to get your hands dirty and manipulate equipment and things like that. The challenge is not everybody has a metric tape measure. Not everybody has every piece of equipment that I would wish you had in order to do some of these labs at home. And so many of them I am going to have data taken via photographs and things like that. Is that as much fun? No, it's not as much fun. Getting your hands dirty is half the fun of being a scientist and doing science labs. But these are weird times and so we are doing whatever we have to do in order to have similar experiences uh, for this class in this weird situation. So we are modifying as necessary. Uh, second thing I wanted to say is working alone versus working with somebody else. I don't have a problem if you want to work with a classmate. Now we're in this, again, weird situation where we are supposed to be socially distancing ourselves from other people. If you feel comfortable and safe and that it is okay for your health to work with someone else, I don't have a problem with that. But as always, you must turn in your own lab report and you must do your own work. Um, I believe in the fact that if you have somebody you can bounce ideas off of, that that is a good thing. Um, I think we learn from each other. We learn by bouncing ideas off of someone else. So that is okay with me, but as long as ultimately you are doing, doing your own calculations, doing your own work, um, then I don't have any problem if you team up to do a lab. Now, I don't want a team of eight people doing a lab because typically one or two people do the math and everybody else sits there and does their nails or something else. So uh, be reasonable. Um, I don't want one person doing the math and everybody else saying, hey, give me your numbers and I'll just turn it in because that's not fair to the one or two people who are doing all the work. So please, if you are the one doing all the work, say no to the uh, other ones who are asking and I give you permission to say no. That being said, let's talk about this ballistic pendulum lab. First off, where are we going to find it? If you go to our Canvas course and you go to Modules, the first at-home lab is going to be under Module 8, and it is the Ballistic Pendulum at-home lab. And the Ballistic Pendulum at-home lab um, is very similar to the face-to-face -face, uh, version of this lab. Uh, this is the version that I printed. Now, if you have a printer at home, um, I'm going to recommend that you print this and fill this out. I wrote this with a lot more detail with the idea that you are at home. You are not in class with me, so I can't give you as many hints and help regarding how to do things and background information. Um, if you do not have a printer at home and you do have the lab from the packet, this is the lab from your lab packet. Um, there's some similar background information, but not as much explanation because typically I would be in the room with you to assist you. If you are going to write on the lab from your packet, uh, essentially the length of the arm, the mass of the ball, the angle, and then the calculations, you start with number 13. But uh, you would then start the calculations here to the end, and this is what you would scan in, put your name on, of course, and turn in if you do not have a printer or have access to a printer. But regarding explanations, I'm going to go back to this version because I included a lot more detail. So please refer to this version as you try and do the lab for that detail. So first off, what is a ballistic pendulum? A ballistic pendulum uh, was used long ago and far away to calculate muzzle velocity of things like bullets. Um, a bullet would be sh shot out of a gun. It would be lodged into a wooden block on a 
rod. This is not a string, but a metal or wooden dowel rod. The bullet would become lodged in here and then this whole apparatus would swing upward. It was real typical back in the old days when I was in college for a physics lab to have a rifle range in the basement and that's what my college had and this was a classic lab that we did. Uh, in the modern world having rifles around colleges is considered not what is done and so this has been replaced with this. This is a photograph I took of one of our ballistic pendulum apparatus that we use at CBTC. Now what is this right here is actually the gun itself. Um, this plunger is used to put the cannonball in the cannon. This is the pendulum arm. It is moved out of the way. The plunger plunges the ball down into the device. And then when the yellow string is pulled, the gun is fired. Here is a quick little video that I took of this in action. And thank you, Joe, yeah. for helping me. There you go. So the ball is fired and uh, up it goes. Now, where am I looking? I'm looking back at the lab. There we go, going through lots of screens. So what are you trying to do? You're going to use this information from this piece of apparatus to mathematically calculate the speed, the muzzle velocity of the ball as it comes out of the cannon. Okay, that's your quest. That's your goal. What pieces of data are you going to have? You are going to have as data the length of this pendulum arm from the pivot up here down to the bottom of the pivot below this little gold thing here. You are going to have the mass of this pendulum arm. This unscrews from right here and this whole arm had been taken off and massed and this is the mass of the pendulum arm. You will also know the mass of the pendulum ball. This is the mass of that steel ball. I put that on a balance and that is its mass right there. The length of the pendulum arm from the bottom of that seal post to where it pivots goes up to right there. That is the center of the pivot and you can read that off of that meter stick. Now when the pendulum fires there is this this little angle measuring device. When you begin the process, you reset the little black doodad here to zero. When you pull the string, the pendulum swings up and the arm stops at its maximum altitude. The maximum altitude reached when this was fired is here and you read the angle from right at the front leading edge of this black arm. So that is the angle. You are going to use the, all of those pieces of data to calculate the muzzle velocity of the ball. Now, how are you going to do it? Here is the big overview of the calculation. You're doing the math backwards. You are going to start from the angle here, knowing the length of the rod. You're going to use this information and going to remember the Tarzan problem. Remember that Tarzan problem it was one of the example problems I asked you to watch. And if you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. You're going to use that to calculate the change in height of this. Once you know the change in height of this, you can calculate the potential energy that this has here. Use the potential energy to calculate the kinetic energy down here. And this is going to be a conservation of energy part of the situation. Then you find the velocity of the pendulum block pair right here. That velocity is used and then before that, it's going to be a conservation of momentum problem. Momentum of the ball alone, then the, moment, it, then the momentum lodges in the block and that's going to be the momentum of the ball plus block and arm. So it's going to be conservation of momentum for this part of the problem and conservation of energy for the back part of the problem. Now the way the calculations are set up 
if you follow the little yellow brick road, I lead you through the calculations one step at a time, and you will be able to do this. Trust me on that. Um, and for example, like here, I say set up the equation, and I ask you to gather some numbers from previously in the lab and calculate things. Eventually, you are going to calculate the efficiency of the collision and how much energy is lost in the collision. If you have watched all of the videos up until this point, you will know how to do this. If you get stuck at any moment in time, please give me a call, give me an email, um, and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. You can do this, um, and it's a classic physics lab. Almost every physics lab in the world does a ballistic pendulum equation. All right, good luck with it, and uh, we'll talk to you very, very soon. And somewhere is my stop button. There we go.